tonight. Gothics delves deep into moral philosophy. Do you hate communism? I have opinions on World War II. Hitler is in the clear. And Steve talks about women. Historical Christians really didn't like women. And they're not alone. So, welcome back to Low Fruit. It has been about a year, my Mm -hmm. fault, sorry. Absolutely. So, welcome back to Low Fruit. Not really much else to say other than excited to make some content. Now, talking of content, I published a video recently on Dr. Paul Copan and particularly his, shall we say, defences of biblical slavery. Uh, It was a great video. It features Dr. Joshua Bowen. Totally check it out. We'll leave a link in the description. But one of the comments we received was a recommendation to look at another video from another content creator, namely Gothics. And the video is titled The Dangers of Atheism. Can't be moral people. No, we can't be moral (laughs) people. So I went, okay, I'll check it out. We'll see whether or not it's worthy of a Rationality Rules video. It's not. um, But it is worthy of low fruit. And so... What you're about to see, yeah, you're 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 more than welcome. Anyway, let's just get straight to it. You hate child abuse. What about gang violence? Do you hate that? Maybe you hate school shootings. Perhaps you hate murder in general, taking an innocent life. What about that? What about child mutilation? Do you hate the sexualization of children? Or maybe you hate sex trafficking in general do you hate communism if you answered yes to any of these questions and i could keep going but if you answered yes then you should also hate atheism (laughs) well (laughs) seems i must have a bit of dilemma in my own line of thinking here then because you're not a communist no i'm not a communist Um, what about what about child sacrifice no i I don't Mm, tend to do a lot of that mm. Yeah, not yeah. Mm, very, very interesting. So it's strange. So it's a great start. It's I, I hate myself clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do you <laughs> do you dislike bad people? Well, I should definitely dislike atheists. Then <laughs> that's very much the the sentiment I'm getting from oh, that. Oh my goodness. And, uh, mm. Yeah, and then she wonders in her own comment section of why she seems to have uh, touched a nerve as she. Yeah, she's yeah. like, oh, you get triggered so easily. You just called us like. You basically just said, you said that we remote. sacrifice children. That like, <laughs> what, what do you expect? Well, Unbelievable. The funniest bit about that to me, obviously, is the fact that a lot of those are held up as good things in the Bible, aren't they? Yes, they absolutely Communism, are. Communism, not so you, much. You, but... <laughs> you know what? I think, I think what would be good, Abraham killing Isaac. Yeah. Like, God goes, why don't you just give me your son? And he goes, yeah, I'll sacrifice my son, no yep. problem. And it was a moral thing yep. until he told him not to. Until he told him not to. So it was yeah. perfectly moral. God yeah. said, murder your child. And yep. he went, yep, I'll murder my child because that's morally correct. God said so. And, and then, then, God then changed his mind. And then God goes, I changed my mind. I know I'm omnipotent, <laughs> so I have no reason to change my mind. I know exactly what's on, on your heart, but I'm going to change my mind. Let me make myself very clear. I didn't say you should hate atheists. What I said is you should hate atheism uh, kind yes of yeah yeah very no it's very kind of her yes hate the sin not the sinner and to be fair i i agree with gothics here right so don't hate the christian here that is incredibly bigoted and saying absolutely ridiculous stupid things because the reason she's saying stupid things the reason she she is just so bigoted is because she's a christian so hate christianity not the christian okay very important lesson. And um, the only issue I have with uh, hate atheism, atheism doesn't really prescribe anything. So what is there to hate? Hate the absence but of th- a belief. But this this is what they do. Like We've just got it from her. She connects everything that she dislikes and calls it atheism. atheism yeah. Like, what part of atheism says... Child sacrifice. You, child sacrifice. <laughs> what part of atheism says that you should be for the government <laughs> owning the mean the means of production? What does lacking a belief in God, so not being convinced that a God exists, have to do with the people owning the means of production? <laughs> not an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this important? As most of you know, I used to be a Democrat. I used to support political candidates based on my feelings, based on my skin color. That sounds like your problem, not atheism. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that does. Like I <laughs> I used to support things based off of my skin color. But you know what she's doing? She's trying to imply this is what Democrats do, yeah. and this is what atheists do. 
Which it's not. Which it's not. It's just, it's just, oh, God, goodness. Color based on what the social consensus was of the group that I surrounded myself with. That well, tells I'm... me you didn't think for yourself for quite a while then. She was saying that she was in, you know, essentially an echo chamber, just repeating yeah. what the masses say. So now she's in a Christian majority country saying exactly what the majority yeah, of Christians are yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 she is red-pilled, man. Now that, she, now oh, that she's, she's, a, yeah, now yeah, that yeah, she's yeah. a conservative, yeah, yeah, she's yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah, in yeah. an echo no, chamber No, anymore. she's not in an echo chamber <laughs> at all anymore. Like, she's completely out of it. <laughs> she's definitely not conforming to the belief structures no, of other no. Christians around her. Yeah, and like one of the greatest signs <laughs> is that throughout most of like the last 50 years, at least, most of US history, they've demonized atheists, calling them communists. But she would never just echo that statement, no, would she? No, 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 not at no. all. Now, I walked away from the left back in 2020. And um, although I started to really resonate with a lot of the opinions of people that had more of a right-leaning perspective, essentially, I got red-pilled. If you don't know, that's the official term. I got red-pilled. Sorry, it all makes sense now. Yes, yes. That's why she's talking like this. Yeah. She she took the same pill that all the other people took. Pe yeah. <laughs> and that's not a bubble. <laughs> all right. Maybe, maybe this is a hot take, but people that boast or, or speak as if, you know, I've been red-pilled, it's the equivalent of men going, I'm an alpha. There's, there's a whole lot of cringe there. Well, what I find particularly interesting is could I not describe her as, I don't know, woke? She became aware of political oh, and social facts. Oh, yeah, she's aware. It's the red pill woke. It's the red pill woke. Yeah, it's red the conservative woke, woke is yeah. the red pill. Yeah, I became aware of the fact that I'm in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> and although I, I really resonated with a lot of these ideas, I noticed something very early on. I kept finding myself butting heads with a lot of people that were essentially on the same side, right? We shared the same core beliefs as it came to the red pill movement with the exception of certain issues that all tied back to morality. What if I told you that this is also true of atheists? Like, we're not convinced that God exists, but we don't share the same views when it comes to epistemology, ontology, mm. Or you know any of the of the sub arguments such as you know abortion, such as trans rights, such as women's rights, such as well the economy. What what if I told you that things are a bit more nuanced than you're making out? So let me give you an example. There was this one uh, YouTuber I thought we were cool, and then all of a sudden this person starts screaming at me on social media because I. Uh, started to become more outspoken about how I was against abortion. So all that to say, despite me taking the red pill, I came to the realization that the red pill cannot provide us with objective morality. Becoming aware of things can't make you, can't give you objective morality. It's incredible insight. I know. Um, I could never have achieved that on my own without it, this video. Thank you, God. It, it, it's almost like discovering a new echo chamber doesn't give you moral grounding. No, no. I just... Very Amazing. I don't think I've ever heard that opinion before. No, brilliant stuff. So now we get into the territory of, well, hold on, hold on, gothics. You don't need to believe in God to know what's right and what's wrong. For example, murder. We all know murder is wrong, so you don't need God to, to tell you that. Yeah, sure. So just to clear up, obviously, murder is defined as an unlawful killing. Yeah, it is, yeah. So, so I, I kind of... I don't want to say, like, by definition it's wrong, but we're kind of getting to that sort of I, thing. I, but what you obviously want to do is, you know, killing is wrong, but yes. she can't actually have that because she is okay with yeah. killing in defense. Yeah. So she has to go down the murder route, yeah. which has a specific definition in law. Yeah. So it doesn't really make sense to hold this as a... This this is a bit of a Mott and Bailey that's going on. It's, it's when they're saying you can't... In order to say that murder is wrong, you're going to need to believe in God, or you're going to have to have a grounding in God, which is where she's going. There's just so much wrong with this. It, to murder someone is to unlawfully kill someone. 
And as you said, if you put it down and to... And that's why we fight over whether something was murder, manslaughter... manslaughter exactly, exactly. exactly. But if you want to just blanket say, thou shalt not kill, which is actually what the Bible says, by the yes. way. It doesn't say, thou shalt not murder. Well, thou shalt not kill unless I tell you otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, thou shalt not kill. By the way, you know the Midianites? Slaughter them all. All of them. Yeah. Kill all of the men, all of the women, yeah. all of the little boys, and take all the little girls home for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. What does, what does the Bible say about rape? Oh, it's perfectly fine with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's perfectly fine. In fact, if you want a wife, go oh, find a woman. Seduction. Seduction. <laughs> seduction. <laughs> rape. And then, then, no, no, it's not, it's not rape. It's, it, no, definitely not. This is a case of seduction, isn't it, Paul Copan? Um. <laughs> I'm sick of Christians lecturing us on morality, man. Like, it's unbelievable. It gets tiring. It gets tiring. You don't need to know God to know that murder is wrong, but you have no way of justifying it. Now, for- Ooh, that's quite a bold claim. I'm really looking forward to the philosophy that she brings forth. You know, the ethics. She starts talking about consequentialism, uh, deontology, you know, exactly <laughs> how divine command theory works and how that works with morality. I hope we're not just going to get an abl just a blank assertion again, but we'll no. find out. But, um... What's particularly interesting, I love this sort of idea of, oh, you can't ground your morality. I don't believe in objective morality. And then someone like her is going to go, oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. well, yeah. If you if you look around the world, so I don't care about what, you, what your beliefs are in here. I'm just going to delve into what, what we see as evidence, right? We're in uh, the mid-1930s Germany. Yep. And there's a Jew hiding in the basement and a knock at the door. Excuse, excuse me, sir. Uh, <laughs> do you have... Jews in your house at all? Oh, well, it would be wrong to lie. Yes, yeah. they're hiding under oh, there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want you to know that because you told the truth, God is going to reward you in yeah, heaven. Exactly. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I just, I, I've never bought this objective morality thing. It, it relies on so many factors. The way that theists define objective morality is not morality at all. No. If you want to talk about morality as an objective state, it's absolutely accessible to atheists. Those that don't know, the Bible is considered the word of God. So all of the moral laws, all of the values, the principles, essentially the... Uh, the instruction manual for the creation, us. We're intended to live our life in a particular way, and the Bible gives us insight as to how we're supposed to live our life. So, I've got to say, when it comes to the Bible giving us instruction on how to live our life, my favorite one is something that was used in the US to bring over black slaves. And what that was is they said in Leviticus, you are to get your slaves from the lands around you. And so what they did is they went to the lands around them and they said to the Africans there, hey, if you enslave other Africans, we'll buy them off you. We're allowed. It says so in the Bible. Like, isn't that beautiful? It oh, uh, it's morality. Cool. And what's obviously also beautiful about this is the way the Bible is written allows so many interpretations of what right and wrong is as well. But yep. surely, if they're if they're reading the Bible and you know reading it properly, they they should have all come to the exact same conclusion as her, I guess. Indeed, <laughs> you, as as I've put it before, there's as many Christian gods as there are Christians. Yeah, and the reason for that is that every Christian has a complete. They they don't have the same views on things. They have different views, and the Bible is written it's not even written in such a way to do this it's just this is what humans do so for example let's say that you are someone that doesn't want to be bashing gay people okay well and let's say in this hypothetical situation you're someone that does okay you get you get that one sorry <laughs> you can go to the bible and you can open you know you, you can grab that little bible up here right and you can open up several different verses that yep. say stone homosexuals to death yes you can get lots of verses out of this and go right that's what we should do with gay people. Whereas I could do, and this is this is what most Christians do whenever the Bible is clearly against what their intuitions are. You just turn to that lovely page. The next one. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's better. Oh. Every single one that I don't like that doesn't align with my own intuitions that are relative to my culture, Jesus says... You should love thy neighbor as, the, as yourself. And that means that, that those verses can be absolutely ignored <laughs> and go from there. Overrides, overrides it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. great. Exactly. Before I unpack this, I want to first start off by establishing a few principles found in the Bible. In Romans 2.15, it talks about how the law is written on our hearts. 
Romans has become one of the most laughable chapters to me, largely <laughs> thanks to people like Ray Comfort as well. Well, you know we've just taken um, the mick out of the love thy neighbour as yourself. This is one of the same verses that is vague enough for people to go, hmm, okay, what this is saying is that what's written on my heart, which is to say my moral intuitions well, are correct. I, I almost feel like that's quite charitable. You reckon? How I feel. How I feel. <laughs> My feelies, okay, are objective morality. Okay? Ben Shapiro would be disappointed in her. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but to be fair, right, you know, this man says, and, you know, he says, facts don't care about That's your feelings. That's you'd be disappointed. <laughs> and, and this is why he wears a cap to, you know, be able to protect himself from supernatural rays. So, you know, like, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I, I, requirements for law are written on our hearts. So... That really would be whoever's in charge of writing the law that day. How they feel about a thing is good enough for writing that law. See, I what I think is happening on this one is it really is like the "Love Thy Neighbor" verse. It's allowing your intuition to override what's actually explicitly stated by God yeah. in the Bible, um, because this verse is is just so comforting to Christians, and they don't seem to care that the next Christian next to them has a completely different thing written on their heart. On their heart, it's written that you should probably be, you know, quite accepting and understanding of trans people. But for you, it's like, no, 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 no. It's written on my heart that that's an abomination. It's grooming, even. You know, Actually, like, this is... There's, a, there's another thing going on here as well. Mm -hmm. She has to follow the laws written on her heart, because if she followed the laws written, written on the, the paper, book, <laughs> she would not be able to make this video no, right she now. Wouldn't. <laughs> she actually really wouldn't, because, yeah, yeah, like, that's... <sighs> Problem is, our conscience was distorted as a result of the fall when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit that God explicitly told them not to eat. Oh, for goodness! Oh, here I go. actually, I also hate hearing it being called the fall now. I, yeah. Like the yeah, more yeah, videos yeah. that I've been watching when or, or going over with you, mm -hmm. every time it comes up as the fall, it's like it's not the fall; it's the bloody trap. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? It's like right. I'm going to. Put you in a room with a red button. Right, thank you very Do much. Do not press that button. Oh, uh, ho ho hold up, hold up. <laughs> I, I need to ask you, Reese. Do I actually know what pressing the red button does? No. <laughs> oh, is that because I don't have knowledge of good and evil? Yet? Oh, it is, yes. Oh, crap. So it really is like putting a child, a baby, in a room with a nuclear bomb for them to press mm -hmm. because the baby doesn't know that you shouldn't press of good the and evil. Doesn't know it at all. Also, you're omnipotent, right? Yes. And you're omnipresent, and you're omnibenevolent. So you knew whether and, or not I, I would press the, the button. And I had the ability to stop you. And you had the, of course you did. You, you you know all things. So you know that I'm going to press the button. Yeah. Yeah? I'm not um, going to do anything about it. And, and I also I, set the punishment for what happens if you do press the button. Mm, mm, this is really moral. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I I'm I'm pretty. Oh, one can, might can you, say, right, do me one favor then. Do me one favor. Can you not let in the devil to convince me to press the button? No, no, I can't. I can't possibly uh, avoid that. What do you mean? Like, come on, you're all, you're all powerful. Why are you no, letting in the devil? No. This doesn't make any sense. One might say, yeah, this was God's plan. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I've been mentioning in this video is the subordination of women throughout Abrahamic history, and this is actually a perfect point to to really get this on the table. If you read Augustine, if you read Aquinas, if you read many of the early church fathers and pretty much any Christian literature up until about 150 years ago at tops, you will find that Christians despise women. These historically historical Christians really didn't like women. And they're not alone. This is like a human thing. Aristotle, he, he described women as as uh, essentially a failed man. Like, it's it's like a, you know, and then you've got, um, I think it was Martin Luther. He said, look, you know, you're asking me, why is it that women tend to get to maturity quicker than men? Oh, it's such an easy oh, answer. Beautiful. It's for the same reason that weeds grow quicker than roses. Like, that's a normal <laughs> sentiment that's been expressed throughout almost all of Christian history, right? And the reason for that is because who took the apple? Eve. Eve took the apple, and in doing so, she made it so that Adam fell apart. And yeah. that has been the interpretation that's been used throughout all of human history. So, and Of course, continuing on that, um, that history path, mm. women were very much considered 
tools for the continuation of a male line. Yes. Um, when you go through family histories, is it the surname of the woman that's ever recorded nope. or remembered? No, nope. oh, it's it's the male one. Why? Why does that happen? It's, she's worth. She's worth less. <laughs> and why do they think that? Genesis. Yeah. Genesis. What does God do when when Eve takes that apple? Comes into the garden, he goes, your punishment will be greatly multiplied, Eve. You are now to serve Adam. It's explicit. It's in there. It's in this book, damn it. But, thank you. It's in the, to be fair, she may as well read it this she way. Well she read reads whatever she wants out of it. But what you can do instead is just say, no, it's written on my heart. No, um, Jesus says, love your neighbour. Thankfully, what is written on your heart is in alignment with the conservatives of the modern era, yep. not with those from not with a thousand those. years ago. Yeah. Why, for example, I think abortion is child sacrifice, and other people think abortion is health care. Now, this is why we. Yes, that's a uh, opposition of positions. Sure. It's a very disingenuous way. Of, I know. Like, if that's what she means, if she's defining, the <laughs> <goodness laughs> sake. If you're gonna say, well. Um, I would call that yeah. um, that story of Abraham as one of child sacrifice. Yep. She would obviously call it one of um, proving love to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. So you you can frame things like this for everything. The by thing, the way. yeah, you can. And also talking about framing, she's just pointed out that under the Christian paradigm, we have the fall, and so humans are not perfect. And yet what she's done is declared that her opposition is completely wrong and she's done so in a very derogatory fashion and yet speaks as if she's right, as if she's not fallen, as if she couldn't be incorrect in what her views are right now. That's a good point. If, if we're all fallen, we all have the capability of being incorrect. How does she know that she's right? Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. And talking of child sacrifice, isn't the whole story of Jesus child sacrifice? God sends himself as his son, for, put that aside, down to sacrifice himself to himself. That's I, child sacrifice. I actually wholly disagree. It's not a sacrifice at all. No, he didn't actually die, did he? He didn't die. No. He knew that there would be no lasting cost to himself. Yep. Uh, and he, actually, he knew that there would be an ultimate reward of heaven for himself after the case was done. So No, fair enough. I was wrong. It's to not actually yeah, a yeah, sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. No, the two quoque doesn't work. Um, yeah. Very true. Yeah, but it's not a sacrifice. obviously... Christians will call it a sacrifice for our sins. Yes. And not the ones that God imparted onto us. Yep. But also, morality, right? Who who thinks it's okay to punish a child for the sins of the father? Like, imagine oh, imagine you're, you're, you're in the street, right? And let's just say this person here, I don't know if she's got children, but suppose she's got a child. Let's just say I go, right, you've really wronged atheists here, and so I punish her child. What would and you her think of me? And yeah, a great grandchild. And a great grandchild. Like, what would you yeah. think of me? Inherited sin. You want to lecture us on morality and you believe in inherited sin. And you believe in scapegoating. You can do something wrong and then go, you know what? I'm not going to pay for my for my issues here. Instead, I'm going to kill a cat. <laughs> and the cat. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Sacrifice to pass it over to something else. And they lecture us on morality. Well, and then they go, why is it that atheists get annoyed when we speak like this? I actually don't understand how um, people that believe in original sin in the Bible mm -hmm. can then complain about a lot of the parts of the left that say, you know, there needs to be repercussions for, say, slavery, for the British Empire, Yes, et yes. How can you be opposed to um, this retributive <laughs> justice <laughs> centuries after the fact, but also be okay with the punishment of original sin? So, so, so it's they, just a contradiction. Right, so they get there, they, like, they, get, <laughs> they get in front of the camera and they go, listen, the left are so immoral, okay? They're trying to blame me for slavery, but I wasn't alive. Yes, I've benefited from it because of structural... Sus no, they don't even admit that part. No, no. They? Just okay. <laughs> they just go, look, absolutely wrong. You cannot say that I am responsible for the sins of my ancestors. That is absolutely disgraceful. The left are really disgusting. But anyway, <laughs> you have original sin in you, and that's why you need Jesus as your Lord, because he took away the sin of what your great, great, great... Fuck it out! 
<laughs> you, know, you just never see the contradiction. It's always amazing. I know. Need a savior because what that means is, regardless of how good of a person you think you are, you're still going to do wrong in your life. And this, my friends, is precisely why Jesus Christ came to die on the cross so he could offer us free salvation and we can live in the kingdom of heaven for all eternity when we die. It's not free. No. It's not free. It's not free. That's absolute I, nonsense. If, for this salvation, I have to commit myself to believing and behaving in ways that are ascribed to me by a book from a long time ago. That That's not free. The thing is, though, it, it is so much worse than this. You're trying to sell the story that an all-loving God needs you to be convinced of propositions that are yep. frankly utterly absurd oh shit there's another thing that's not moral yeah in order for to get to heaven yeah. you can't make a mistake but then be a good person for the rest nope, of your life doesn't matter how good you are as a person. no you have to repent yeah, and yeah. follow the beliefs of the book yeah um which means i go i'm going to hell yep Hitler is in heaven. Hitler's in heaven. Hitler definitely Catholic. spoke of God all the damn yeah. time. Yeah. So, um, um, well, hang on. So, but objective morality exists, and he 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 ordered <laughs> the deaths of a lot of people. No, oh, no, it wasn't mm, murder. No, it wasn't murder, was it? Well, no, actually, funny enough. Yeah. He said he was the, doing in God's. No, in German law at the time, yeah, it wouldn't have been murder. No, it wouldn't because it would have been, not been an unlawful killing. No, it wouldn't. Have been <laughs> so. Them. And they, they, well, they explicitly said that they were doing God's work. So he's he's in the clear. What, what, what was written on his heart was this is the right thing to do. Yes, the, yeah. the extermination of a people. Yeah. And uh, and God clearly willed it. He's God has willed it in the past. There's mm -hmm. been multiple genocides. And, um, oh, yeah. So this must be the new one that's been commanded. Yeah. There uh, we uh, go. Thank you, Gothics. Hitler is in the clear. Talking of child sacrifice, actually. Uh, do you remember when God got upset with the Egyptians and so commanded it so that all of the firstborn would be killed? No, I don't remember. I wasn't there. Oh, fair enough. Well, I want you to know that you're guilty of that. <laughs> uh, you've inherited the sins of this, I'm but sure. But I wasn't there! Yeah, no, that's how that works. <laughs> how it works, damn it. So, returning to salvation, Jesus explicitly says, no one gets to God, no one gets to heaven, but through him. Mm -hmm. I don't like that, so I'm going to read, uh, love thy neighbour as thyself and what that means is that i wouldn't want my neighbor in hell i love them so probably there's a way to interpret this so that good people go to heaven <laughs> it's written on my heart <laughs> assuming of course we truly believe this and repent of our sins without that hang on we only get it if we truly believe it so me who is unable to be convinced of the proposition yeah i don't get this free entry no nope. because gothics have <laughs> You ever heard what's it? Uh, doxastic voluntarism. Yeah, doxastic voluntarism. You can't yeah. choose your. Beliefs. You can't choose your beliefs. Yeah. Um, so because I don't have the ability to believe complete nonsense and contradictory information. Sorry, do you not believe in people that live to nine hundred years old? No. Jesus Christ. And we've we well we've presented multiple bits of contradictory sort of belief systems from that result with conservatives because i can't do that mm. i have to go to hell yeah does that strike you as moral perfectly pa moral well his his you're not punishing me god wouldn't be punishing me for an action or a choice no he would actually be punishing me for something that he made me incapable of doing yep Ooh. no it's consistent remember <laughs> remember the story in the in in, in, in the garden of eden oh you see? Trap. Yeah. Trap. Yeah. yeah. Trap. Trap. Okay. You're made for other people's amusement. That we're going to hell. So how do we really know what's right and what's wrong? This is where the word of God comes in. And this is also why. Word of God. Divine command theory. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit because there's a lot of problems with divine command theory. Would you believe it or not? Because it's not morality. It's not morality. Mm. It's extremely important for Christians to read and understand their Bible to not fall into the trap of conforming to the patterns of this world. People like this are so annoying. I know. Gothics, you've, you've just told us to read the Bible. Yep. But have you read the Bible? Yep. Because you wouldn't be here if you had. No, if you'd read 2 Timothy, for instance, it says in 2 Timothy that a woman is never to lecture a man. This is something that's been upheld unless, for a very long time. It's why women haven't been ordained as ministers. 
Maybe, though. Yeah. Maybe she thinks that this YouTube channel is only watched by women. <laughs> in that case, she's not lecturing men, so she's in the clear. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. it's maybe it's something like that. But it, it's amazing that every generation of Christian has arrogant people like her d- claiming that all of the other people, they're just not reading their Bibles. You know, and atheists about and th- Never mind those people that read the Bible and then went, well, this is bollocks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every generation... That was me, by the way. <laughs> Can't believe it. No. I deserve hell, Nelson. No, I must have been, God, eight. Yeah. And I, rem- I remember reading Noah's Flood and I was like, well, that doesn't work. Mm. How do you fit all of... There's more than, like, 12 animals. <laughs> it's the kangaroos. It's how they got the kangaroos that, that surprises me. That's, that's pretty impressive. And also, there's, like... Two million species. And then where did all the water go? I just, yeah. just, like even when I was like eight, I was able to just sit there and start doubting the stories of the Bible. Yeah, it, it really didn't take a a lot of. Basically, I got to the age of reason, and then that was it. Done. Creating our own standards for morality is extremely flawed. We see it with, as I said, you generate your own standards of morality by your interpretation of what the Bible says. Yeah. And the bits that you choose to ignore. So you don't have a, a solid basis for morality because you change your interpretation. Yeah, which is why your views are not consistent with Christians throughout history. And how do you justify this? You find a very, very vague verse, such as that it's written on your heart, and hey, that justifies your intuition. Well done. The abortion debate. Apparently, murdering your baby is morally okay. It's not murder. Yeah, it's not murder. <laughs> not, not, not by the definition not, not of by the society. Definition of the law. Yeah, exactly. But um, more than that, obviously, obviously, she's driving at the killing thing. Um, but let's just very quickly remember, abortion, it's not actually an atheism moral position. Nope. There are Christians okay with abortion. There are atheists who aren't. Yeah. So this is actually kind of irrelevant, so should we? It's, yeah, it's completely irrelevant. Oh, another thing to be said is that abortion isn't like yes, no. It's not like yes up to nine months. Yeah, there's like, there's lots of ifs. There's, there's ifs and buts. Yeah. Most vast majority of people are okay with abortion. They're okay until it has a nervous system, which is about twenty yes. weeks. But you're not going to get that nuance from someone like this. They're just going to define the position as you know something that's essentially the worst of the worst. It's very disingenuous. She's going to get a spot on the Daily Wire at some point. Probably. Yeah. It with the transgenderism ideology, apparently encouraging people to mutilate themselves because they believe they were born in the wrong body or they believe they're actually the opposite sex is morally right. Well, I'm not going to go too much into what a dismissive <laughs> cunt she's being. Um, but let's just focus on the mutilation part very yep. quickly. Yep. Um, Jews believe in genital mutilation because God really, really likes foreskins. Christians do it in the US. It's like a US Christian thing. Is it? Yeah, I, I, I knew it was a Judaism thing. I didn't realise it was right. a like, Christian oh, thing baby well. boy, cut off his part of his, you know, anatomy and then complain that well, the left is mutilating. I might <sighs> consider that bodily sacrifice. Others might consider it healthcare, you know. Yeah, uh, it's very true. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Hmm. But, <sighs> yeah, let's... She she needs to watch the videos upcoming on the whole trans thing, obviously, because I don't think she's ever considered other human beings. By the way, give it give it a generation or two. That's another thing that will change. You'll get Christians going, no, 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 like, you know, we're fallen. We're fallen, and some people have fallen in such a way so that they are born in the wrong body. Oh, God, oh we're gonna... totally pro, pro-trans. And you know what? You can't ground this without us. It's Christians that have made it so that this is accepted. I almost oh, no. I am. I'm going to have to talk about it. You remember your uh, story you did in your video of Jane with complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. Yep. On uh, I think it was Cameron Batuzzi's video. You obviously had a few Catholics and stuff in the comments there. Yeah. And obviously they confirmed that you know well, if you find out the woman has uh, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, she's not a woman. She does have to divorce the man. Yes. And I'm like, right. So your your view on gender in mm-hmm. this case then would actually be when a doctor has examined the internal plumbing. Yeah. And that's the only case that it matters. Yeah. Um, then you've got the fact that she's ignoring this. You have gender-affirming healthcare for people who are cis. Yeah. 
Um, an example being people with gynecomastia. Gynecomastia, yep. Um, obviously, there's healthcare to for a man to get his breast shrunk down. Yep. Um, and there's loads of others. There, there'll be ones where, uh, because sometimes the genitals don't always come out the way is standard for the rest of humanity, there'll be surgeries to alter it so that it looks normal. Yep. So if you've got all of these things for cis people, why can they not exist for trans people? You're, the problem is, is that you're looking for a bit of nuance here. And yes, what I they're going to do is not give you that. Right. Uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, rather, they're just going to label you someone that wants to mutilate children. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I didn't want to go too much into this. It was just that things like that when you when you're that dismissive. Yeah, I know. It's annoying because it tells me you've not even considered the other person's um, position. They're not interested. And yeah, they're not interested. Hey, the same can be said about exposing a child to sexually explicit material, including a drag show. A Who is it that keeps taking their kids to like these like the 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 to like hooters? Right? It's Christian. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, true. come on, son, I'm going to take so, you here. Okay, he, your kid's about 12. What you're she's actually and, but, complaining yeah. about when she says sexually explicit material mm. is uh, gay people. Yep. It's trans people. Yep. It's uh, yep. essentially anything that's not cis or straight. Yep, exactly. And, and the whole point of the drag thing, yep. someone coming up and reading a book to your children that looks different to what your normal community has is only sexual if you're sexualizing it, right? You, you have to have like a rare exception. Like, fair enough, what she's got on screen. That, yeah. Yeah, I... I but it looks like it's outside at a Pride event. It doesn't look like they went into a school to do this. I do I do have my issues yeah. with with public events where people are putting their, their kinks on display to children. Yep. I, I have issues with that. There was one that came up, I think it was over here in the no, UK. No, you don't. No, you're an atheist. Oh, right. You understand? Hmm. There's no nuance. I just the, there was an occasion over here where uh, a light. I think it was over here where a library hired uh, someone in a costume mm -hmm. with um, for a children's reading thing, and they had like a massive dildo. Yeah, that's not strapped true. to them. There was outrage, as you would expect, yeah, sure <laughs> and sure uh, they apologised, as you would yeah. expect. Yep. But so this doesn't. This isn't as widespread a thing as she seems to be portraying either. No, but this is the thing. You focus on the fringe examples yes. and you portray it as if it's the norm. Okay. The point I'm getting at here is that if a trans woman or, or just someone in drag sits down and reads a book to your children, that's, yeah, what's the that, problem? that's not a problem. That's fine. You wouldn't say that, although in the US you would have had this problem. It's the equivalent of just getting another minority in front of your well, child to be yeah. able to say, look... It's a normal human being. Well, here's the don't thing. take any prejudice. I don't think, you know, um, nuns and presenting a nun to yeah. children is the right way to go. It suggests that such a lifestyle is is acceptable. You know, oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. So you shouldn't, shouldn't show so religious we shouldn't people be allowed around to uh, yeah. children. Okay, no. yeah. mm. you know what? Let's make our rhetoric stronger. They're grooming. <laughs> yeah? All right, sweet. And then we just get Fox News to say that again and again and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, nice. Pride Parade. Oh, teaching them how to pleasure themselves because apparently that's a curriculum that kids really need to know in school. Who's so, so I don't... Go on, go on. You go first. Right, so that's a tweet. That's, well, that's like, a tweet Give us like a, a real example, like not a tweet. So the tweet referred yeah. to a bill. Yep. I have no idea what was in the bill, but I have a sneaking suspicion she doesn't either. No. <laughs> but what that was talking there is about sex education. Now, sex education yeah. is very, very important if you want to stop abortions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There is literally studies and evidence that show sex education prevents abortions. So, there we go. But, including, if they're literally including the fact that um, people have sex for pleasure in the education, and how to do it safely. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the problem? Yep. I really wish that I was taught more about sex when I was at school. Because instead, they, go, they, they they say, no, your parents will teach you. They don't teach you. And you just end up going into the world not knowing anything. And, oh, crap, someone's pregnant. You know, like <laughs> something along those lines. Um, none of this has anything to do with atheism. No, that's true, actually. Yeah, why are we talking so much? We're, uh, we're responding to about... <sighs> The grounding for atheist morality, and all she's doing is just complaining about oh. modern society. Mm -hmm. 
And how she doesn't like it. And how she doesn't like it. Yeah. That's essentially where we're at. Just to say these concepts aren't morally good. If we're setting the standards on our own, then this is what we end up with. This We end up with these things if we set the standards on our own. But if we set the standards via the Bible, we end up with child sacrifice, genocide, murder. Yep. Um, we end up with divine right of kings. The divine right of kings. You know, people thinking that they can rule just by virtue of their very blood. Yeah. We get um, oh the the fact that you can uh, rape a person and then marry them. Then it becomes oh so moral. I love um, that one. Yeah, that's yeah. so so moral. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We also obviously get the position that men are inherently worth more than women. Mm, um, moral, moral. So stuff. if we mm. if we set our standards mm. not by ourselves but by the Bible. Yeah. We'll obviously end up with a better society. Genocide. Oh, so moral. Mm. So moral. God commanded it. I just... How can you... Has she ever looked at what has occurred throughout history the more Christian a, a place has been? <laughs> Same can be said about rapists, thieves, murderers. They're setting their own standards, right? Rapists, thieves, and murderers have a get-out-of-hell-free clause. Yep. In fact, you told us it was a free uh, free salvation. Yeah. So rapists, thieves, and murderers, well, they can do what they want mm. as long as they come to Jesus. But you and me, we're atheists. Yeah. We're not going to. Hell. Yeah, I don't like rape. I don't like murder, and I don't like stealing. Um, therefore, I'm going to hell. Oh, you're going to hell um, because you don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. Uh, do, don't you think this is moral? Um, you know, be, being judged not on the content of your character, but by whether or not it's, you're convinced of the proposition. It's amazing, isn't it? Is she was like, oh, we have nothing to base why we would dislike those things in. Mm. Whereas my thing would be, right, okay, well, if we created a society that permitted all these things, mm -hmm. where would we end up? Right, well, if rape was completely permissive, mm -hmm. women would not be able to function in society. Nope. At all. Um You'd also, uh, if we if we went down the thieving thing, there would be no trust mm -hmm. at all across society. And obviously in the States, when someone comes to knock at your door, you'd more likely shoot them than open the door. Yeah. Uh, because, well, theft and murder is, is, is mm -hmm. a commonality. So that's why I don't want those things, because the outcomes of having those things would be fucking horrendous for society the, the thing is Charles Darwin in The Origin of Species I think it was The Origin of Species it might have been the monkeys same have man. figured this out <laughs> well, yeah we know that and like, what he pointed out is he said look if you want to understand morality there's a very easy way to do it if you have two tribes and one tribe acts selfishly and, and feeds from each other and murders each other it's obviously not going to survive compared to the tribe that doesn't do that the tribe that get this loves their neighbour which is a message you find in all of these religions, and it's wisdom that we've had for a very long time. It's because that's the social apparatus we have. By the way, if you're going to love your neighbour, can I just recommend that you don't just write them off as bad people that mm. believe all mm. of the things that you don't like? I, I, I just, I'm ne it never ceases to amaze me how Christian love is always so vile. I'm sure some people watching this will say, well, hold on a second. Those people doing the things that I just mentioned, that's just a small minority. That's a small group of people imposing their ideas on the rest of society. It's not even necessarily that they're a small minority. But quite a lot of them are probably Christian. So it's not even a small part of atheists imposing their positions on society. And there's, there's another aspect. I'm sorry. If they're really, really small minority, do you really think they'll be able to actually impose these things on all of society? The, you, you, you hit on something that's really screwed up in the conspiracy theories that these people believe. They want to simultaneously say that they are this big, bad person, but also that they're tiny. <laughs> Pick a leg. Do, do you know how much a fringe position needs to convince more people in order to become mainstream? Mm -hmm. Like the the end of slavery didn't happen overnight. You know, it it didn't. Um, it took a war. women's women's rights didn't happen overnight. No, gay rights didn't happen overnight. No, these things take 
significant time. And there will have been other movements throughout history where they failed because they couldn't convince people. And it could well be because the moral positions that were being presented were not acceptable to society. Yeah, exactly. We only really hear about the ones that are successful. Yeah. Um, so these these things she's complaining about now, why are they becoming mainstream? Because most of society is starting to realise that, you know, we probably should be providing health care for trans people. We probably should be allowing uh, rape victims to have abortions or or people who just financially can't support themselves, or, you know, all these other reasons, or too young to look after their own children. You know, there's so many reasons why um, these things are getting allowed to happen, and it's because most people are starting to see the sense in it. So, all right, now we're going to move on to another argument that I commonly hear. And we're going to move on to the end of the video. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is a great way to start though, fruit. Like, there yeah, was nothing fruit. there for, to chew on. Just no. Um, in the, <laughs> to be fair, it was six minutes. Yeah. Um, we yeah, have we, we, we learned, can get back to the next one. Not yeah. only have we not learned why atheists can't ground morality, mm -hmm. but we've not actually been given any evidence of why Christians can ground morality. They often don't do that. It's like the presuppositional um, script. It's to say... It's to start with that assumption, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Something to be said about those generations that you were just mentioning of how these things take time in order to mature in societies. Women's rights, gay rights, yeah. trans rights, whatever it might be. It's because, as she said and as she quoted... Our morality is written on our heart. We have an intuition. And our intuition, I would argue, is is based on socioeconomic con uh, contingent considerations. And the reason why it takes so long for these things to change is that people are stagnant in their intuition and they think that their intuition has a monopoly on ethics. Yeah, you rather rely than, on the intuition too much rather than actually precisely. processing something. Yeah. So how is it that society has stopped being... <clears throat> as, you know, went from being very racist to less racist. It's frankly, you have to wait for the generation to die. That's how it's done. Yeah, how is it that, that women's rights have, have become what it is? There's, you know, I would say that a lot of women's rights is grounded in World War Two myself, and particularly uh, the changes in society. That well, were World required. War One was a, a big Kickstarter in the UK for a lot of it. Agreed. Well, we may well consider doing the rest of this video if it's as, as fantastic as, as this part was mm. god please everyone everyone out there especially the people watching this because most people watching us here more than likely to be on the left mm -hmm. do not hold positions just because of your side you left right i don't i don't care think about the positions think of why you've come into those positions the reason that we hold the positions on trans people, for example, that we do, is how many hundreds of hours of discussion and research that we've done to loads. come into that. Absolutely loads. Because my intuitions stand in stark contrast to what my position is now. Same. Um, my position on gay people about 20 years ago yep. is very different to what I've come into now. Um and a large part of that was due to interactions with gay people. It's like, oh yeah, they're normal people, aren't they? The, the thing you know, it, it, it sounds silly to say, but when you form your opinions based off of what you hear from others in your bubble, you're gonna you you're just gonna be. I'm sorry, you're gonna be a bad person. <laughs> you are, yeah. Do you want to know a good way of getting it so that people don't have those bigoted intuitions? Let's just say that people have a bigoted intuition against people that dress up in drag well you expose them to that person and then they yes. realize that they're a human being which for the record is precisely why there is drag reading time like it's to just expose people to different people outside of their bubble so that they can recognize that they're human recognize that okay they're different to me and that's okay i'm not going to allow my fears of the difference make it so that i am bigoted towards that individual and the fears obviously go both ways because that person themselves is going to be <laughs> very very stressed out and worried about how you know everyone else around them is mm -hmm. going to react I, I just want to continue on the little thing about um so one of my friends is he's gay mm -hmm. and when we were at college together i didn't know mm -hmm. but he always made reference to his partner and not obviously boyfriend 
Um, and I, it was said enough times that I picked up on it. And when we were walking to the shops one day, it was like, are you gay? And he went, yeah, is that a problem? No, it's just you, nothing's ever come up. Yeah. And then we just carried on. We ended up being closer friends afterwards because it's just a normal person. It's a human, human being. That's the main thing here is when we're thinking about all these rights and all these, these societal issues, they're not just abstract things. There's human beings at the heart of every single one of these issues. Fucking think about that sometimes, please. Well, I think that that's a lovely note to have Reese back. Let us know down below if you want us to respond to, I, su I suppose it's going to be the second argument from Gothics. Can you even call it an argument? I mean, the first argument to come up, yeah. <laughs> we, okay, we, okay, we'll okay, assume okay. that the second argument is the first argument. Okay, we'll do that. Um, Let us know if you want us to continue or just tell